my penis was oscillating between extremely sensitive and borderline traumatized. When I took the job, ghostwriting spare, the mission was simple, to bring more attention to Prince Harry's penis. I knew everyone's business down to who was circumcised and who wasn't. We called it Roundheads versus Cavaliers. You know, some people are currently confused with our strategy, but I assure you it is part of a carefully orchestrated four-point plan. My todger constantly felt like he was having sex. One, ingratiate the duo to the press by talking about how the royal family's racist. How dark his skin might be when he's born. Two, Netflix takeover. Three, backtrack on the racism stuff. You, you accuse members of your family of racist. British press said that. And four, Harry's penis. We were well aware that the racism stuff would resonate with the American media, but would also also put too much of the focus here, and the purpose of Spare was to bring that focus back here. I remember being in a late night writing session, Harry was still with the family at the time, and I said, Harry, if I'm gonna write the autobiography, I'm gonna need to see the stick. He pulled it out without hesitation, I inspected it thoroughly, at which point I looked him in the eyes and I said, Harry, this is your book, this is the story. And it turns out that story's vast, like the time he smashed an older broad and she treated him like a horse. Earlier in writing, before I was fully enlightened to the magnificence of the dong, I said, Harry, why include that you wore an Nazi costume, or killing 25 Arabs, or all the racial slurs you've said, when we built a brand on the mistreatment of you and Meghan by the royal family mainly due to racism. I said, hairball, I call him hairball. Clearly you know when people say they want vulnerability from a rich white male, at most they want depression, or your experience with the mistreatment of others. It was at this point in my diatribe he began shushing me, pulled the hog out, said something along the lines of kaboom, kaflump, got in my face, started yelling in case you forgot what it looked like, look at it, look at it, he was yelling at the top of his lungs, and that's when it clicked for me that with a piece so magnificent, he could pull a full Michael Richards twice a day and the people would still love him. It was my job to make them see that. She'd urged me to apply Elizabeth Arden cream. My mum used that on her lips. I felt as if my mother was right there in the room, and I took a smidge and applied it down there. People have the highest reverence for Princess Diana, and we wanted to really mash those two together so people start to associate that same feeling when they think of Harry Schlong. That feeling was solidified for me after seeing Harry one night at his mother's gravestone with a shirt that said, The Legend, The Legend, one arrow pointing sideways to his mother's grave, one arrow pointing down to the piece. You know, I jumped up, I said, H-Mac, I also call him H-Mac, I said, this is the cover shot. You know, but ultimately he decided giving her that type of post-mortem clout might take away from the main attraction of the book. Harry his penis. I did remove one section that detailed Harry and his brothers cruising around the streets of London kicking homeless people and what they fondly referred to as getting their steps in. I was just having trouble finding a way to tie the whole thing into Harry's hog. You know, and the truth is, this is just the start. We have Prince of Peen mugs coming, I love Harry's hammer t-shirts, and foam fingers that say the 10 inch prince. That Oprah interview did happen to fall hours after their weekly sex session, so as you can imagine, she didn't know down from up that day. <laughs>